This is part one out of three about the story of Dragon Champions, the lore, the background, and the ongoing story. In the early days, the old gods who created the world of Corridor unleashed a bloody war. During the fierce battles, they exterminated each other, almost breaking the world during the elemental cataclysm. Corridor went to their faithful servants, the dragons. Dragons gathered for the first council. They agreed to never repeat the mistakes made by the gods. Dragons were not the only creations of the gods. The lower races were created to maintain the balance of the universe. The gods ordered each race to have its own dragon protector. Not all dragons were satisfied with this role, but they were allowed to bestow part of their power on the heroes whom the storytellers later named dragon champions. Millennia succeeded each other. The dragons tried to move away from power, allowing the lower races to decide their own fate. Heroes were born. Dragons secretly gave them strength, but the young adventurers did not know that they were destined to become dragon champions. The empire of people, the great houses of the pandas and the kingdom of the elves, honor their patron dragons, although they have never met or even seen them. The orc, Kaknanate, the goblin machinery and the pride tribes formed the wasteland clans. The members despise the dragons and they do not hesitate to use the ancient artifacts left by the dragons. Even are they ready to take them into battle if necessary. The Wasteland clans and the Order of the White Flame often claim the same land, so conflicts between factions have not subsided for several decades. About Elves Elves was the first of the lower races in Corridor, first among equals, the most ancient and ever young race. Firstborn, that's what they call themselves. Elves do not die from old age or diseases, but in battle. There they are not immortal. Inhabiting the Valorian woods, the firstborn were able to build one of the most efficient state machines of the continent. The elven king had long ruled the elves embodying the ideas and skill of an entire race. But the king died a mysterious death, which circumstances to this day are still shrouded in mystery. Rumor has it that it was a curse or retribution for unknown affairs of the past. It is only known that Venorian sacrificed his immortal life so that one of his descendants would receive part of the strength of the protector dragon, becoming a dragon champion. There were few enemies in the kingdom of the Valerian woods, but the goblins constantly annoyed the elves. Their machines cut down large parts of the woods for the sake of quality wood that they used in their military vehicles. In the end, the elves lost their patience when treacherous goblins in their impudence started lumbering the tree of life, one of the most sacred relics for the elves. The king's son, Hannibal Luna, sat on the throne and took up the reign of government. He began to look for allies for a full-scale war to end the goblins. However, 
the elven pride did not allow the firstborn to enter into an alliance with anyone. Hannibal was about to send messages to potential allies when Emperor Aurelian himself, ruler of the Vent Empire, which belongs to the people, came to visit his court. Humans was not among the opponents of the Elven Crown, but still, these two nations could not be called allies or even friends. However, during the diplomatic visit, Aurelian convinced Hannibal that their people had followed similar traditions for centuries and the military alliance would give them enough combined power to face the goblins and then the orcs. But the most surprising part of this meeting of the two rulers was the appearing of a third. A respectful leader of the panda houses came to the court a few hours after the council began. Hannibal and Aurelian were extremely surprised because the pandas have been living a hermit lifestyle apart from the rest of the lower races. The leader, Kin Li, hoped to distract his people from internal strife, putting red pandas and white on opposite sides. And so the Order of the White Flame was founded. So the war of individual nations became a war of new, not strengthened alliances. About the Vend Empire. The Empire is a people's state formed from once scattered kingdoms. Thanks to the will and oratory of Aurelian of the Sun, who declared himself emperor. Aurelian and his advisor Solius back to back participated in the innumerable battles of the reunion wars. After the nations were united, the emperor became a father. His son, Crown Prince Darian, was born a healthy, beautiful child and quickly became a favorite of the common people. In addition to his father, Crown Prince was raised by Solius, a wise, powerful healer, an adherent of the Temple of the Sun and the head of the cult of Amos, the Solar Dragon. Darian grew up a stately man, a calculating strategist, a strong warrior, and as soon as the opportunity presented himself, he began to show himself on the battlefields, fulfilling the instructions of his father and of Solius. Constant expansion led the empire to the Roa wasteland. The emperor united the human people living on the borders of the wasteland and defending new subjects entered the war with the orcs. This conflict lasted for a long time with varying success until Aurelianus and Solius decided to turn to the help of magic. More on this later on in the story. About the great panda houses. Gods created pandas in the distant land of Kulun, where fleeted rivers flow into crystal clear lakes and the fauna is in full harmony with the flora. However, the main territory of Kulun is surrounded by mountains and are isolated from the rest of Corridor. Therefore, the life and social order of the great houses have been hidden from the other races of Corridor for millennia. The heads of the great houses make up the circle of balance, a council of powerful magicians 
whose members from the dawn of era have been assigned with the task of keeping Kulun safe from the outside world. Disputes between the red and the white pandas have been going on for a long time. How to best govern the state? How effective various military strategies would be? And so on. The disputes were often resolved in fights of honor or open clashes between houses. The circle of balance did not support these clashes. It weakened the country. But then the heads of the houses had a vision that filled them with fear. This fear eventually led Kin Li to seek out the elves and the humans. There are four great houses in the pandas, two for each nation. House of Wisdom, controlled by white pandas, it consists of sages and healers. Blade House, controlled by white pandas, it consists of adherents of ancient martial arts, the shields of the nation. House of Fire, controlled by red pandas. It consists of mages, masters of various magic schools. House of Shadows, controlled by red pandas. It consists of the ninja, the master of silence and stealth. The next episode will be about the clans of the wasteland, the demons, and possibly more.